In the last video, we looked at the 74LS189, which is the SRAM chip that we're going to use for the memory in our computer. And remember, it uh, gives us 16 4-bit words. And of course, we want uh, 16 bytes or, or 16 8-bit words, so we're going to need to use two of these chips. So I've got two of these chips here. Uh, and then the other thing is that the output data is, is the complement of the stored. So the, it's got these inverters on the output, which we really kind of don't want. Um, so we're going to have to re invert those. Uh, so we're also going to use two of the 74LS04 chips, which are these inverters. And each, each chip has six inverters. We're only going to use four of them uh, from each chip. So let's start out by sticking these things on the board here. So we've got our two uh, 74LS189s and our two uh, 74LS04 inverters. So now I'll just hook up power to each of these. And the last pin here is the 5 volt power, and then this uh, pin 8 or pin 7 on these chips is ground. And so it's pin 7 on these chips because these are 14 pin chips instead of 16 pin chips. And I've got all these turns, so pin 1 is over here on the left. You can see the little dot there indicates pin 1. So I got the power hooked up for all of them. So the first thing I'll hook up is the, uh, for the 74LS189, we've got the outputs here. Uh, output 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to hook these up to the inverters because these, these outputs are inverted and we want to re-invert them so that we get the, the right output here. So first thing I'm going to do is hook up those outputs. And so that's the first, the, the four outputs of this first chip now are connected to uh, four of the inverters on this first chip here. So these are the inputs, input for one, two, three, and then four up here. So it just corresponds to these inputs on these inverters for these, and then this one up here. And we're, we're not going to use these two. So next I'll do the same thing for the second pair of chips. Yeah, I saw there were a few people that commented on the last video asking, you know, why use the 74 LS189 when you've got to hook these inverters up to it? And it's, it's you know, it seems a little bit inconvenient. And, and yeah, it is a little inconvenient. Um, it doesn't seem terrible, but, uh, uh, you know, I looked and there was a 74 LS219, but I, I couldn't seem to find that anywhere. Um, uh, but if, I guess if I could get my, if you get your hands on one, uh, that one doesn't require the inverters. Um, and, and yeah, there's other chips too. You know, I just didn't do a ton of research to find the, you know, the absolute best chip. I'm, I'm just kind of using what I've got available. But, uh, you know, if you've got, uh, if you want to find a different chip and, and use that in yours, I, I definitely encourage you to do that. You know, definitely, uh, 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 hopefully these, these videos are, are kind of inspiring you to, to try some of your own things. Because yeah, if you, uh, you know, if you want to build this and make some modifications to it, uh, you know, not only are you going to probably learn more by, by trying your own modifications, but you'll, you'll be even, even more proud of, of what you've built when, when you're done. Uh, but in any event, now we've got our, uh, all of our outputs of our 74LS189s hooked up to our inverters. And so now we should, somewhere in here, have inverted, uh, or actually uninverted, um, outputs now from our memory. So of course we want to be able to see what's going on here, so uh, I'm going to hook up some LEDs to each of the outputs. Uh, so the outputs of these inverters now are, you know, pin 2, 4, 6, uh, and then on the one here, it's going to be uh, pin 8 up here, and then over on the, on the uh, yeah, on the one on the right here, uh, I used pin, uh, it'll be pin 12, and then again 2, 4, and 6 uh, down along the bottom here. So I can just hook some LEDs up to those pins here so we can see what's going on. So that's two pins two, four, and six. Um, you know, I'm also using this this inverter up here, so that's going to be pin eight up here. So I'll just hook up a little jumper that brings it down to the bottom here, and I can hook my LED up right there in line. And then same thing over on this side. Just hook up a little jumper to bring that down here, so I can hook my LED up down here. And then on this chip again, it's just pins two, four, and six. And there we go. Those should be the uh, the outputs of the of the inverters that are coming from the outputs of our of our RAM chips over here. So next, if I look at the pinout of the RAM chip, there's a, a pin two is a chip select, and it's an active low, uh, and 
that basically allows us to enable or disable each of the chips. And in our case, we always want them to be enabled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie pin two on both of these chips low so that both of these chips will always be enabled. And then to control whether the output of these chips is actually going out on the bus, I'm gonna use the 74LS245 that we've used uh, many times before in our registers, which is this 8-bit uh, 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 tri-state buffer. So we'll just add this in over here. In this case, it's a 20-pin chip, so pin 10 over here is ground, and pin 20 up here is gonna be five volt power. And again, this is a bi-directional uh, buffer, but we're only gonna use it in one direction, so we'll just set the direction pin, which is pin one, to, uh, to five volts. Um, so that will uh, set the direction so that it's always going from sort of these bottom eight pins to the top eight pins. And then these bottom, so these bottom uh, you know, pins, uh, what is it, two through nine, are gonna be our inputs. And so I'm just gonna hook those up to our eight uh, LEDs here, our eight bits. Okay, so now all of our, our outputs here are, that are correctly inverted are uh, now hooked to the inputs of our, of our tri-state buffer, so we can hook our, our bus in uh, over here. Now if we look back at the pinout of our uh, 74 LS189 again, um, the other pins that we haven't hooked up yet so far are you know, the data inputs, uh, so D1, D2, uh, D3, D4, and then you know, the, the other four bits on the other chip. Uh, as well as our, our address line, so A0, A1, A2, and A3. So this is a four-bit address, uh, and we've got two chips. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to tie A0 together for, on both chips and then tie A1 to A1 on the other chip, A2 to A2, A3 to A3, so that when we have our four-bit address, it's addressing both chips at the same time, and then you know one chip will have the, the high four-order data bits and the other chip will have the low four-order data bits. Um, so, so basically what we're going to do is just tie these, these four address lines together. So the first address on A0 whoops, is, uh, is pin 1. So we'll just tie pin 1 on these two chips together. And then the second address line is pin 15 here. And then pin 14. And pin 13. So that ties the address lines, uh, the, the four address bits from the two memory chips together. And we'll kind of run out of room on this board, but what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just hook up uh, some, some wires here for those four address lines. And just hook these up here. So we've got basically four address lines. So the first one is, is pin one here. And then the second one is this guy here. Then this, and then this. So I'm just gonna hook them all to ground for now. So basically setting all my addresses to zero, 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 zero. And then eventually we'll have a, another input coming from our memory address register that'll come in to here. We'll, we'll hook that up later. And then same thing for the data lines. So the data, you know, first uh, bit is, is coming, is the input for the first bit is, is here. And then the input for the second bit is here. and then so on for each bit. And of course, important to make sure we keep these in order based on how the bits are ordered here and ultimately how they're going out on the bus. Otherwise, if we get the bits out of order, things are not gonna work correctly. And so these are the, these are the date eight data inputs uh, now to the, to the memory. So we've got our address lines, which we will use to set the address, whether we're reading or writing. Uh, we have the output that is uh, shown on these LEDs and also can be sent to the bus here. Uh, and of course we need our, our output enable, which is just going to be this pin here on this chip. So we can set that high or low to, depending on whether we want to output the data to the bus. So we have our address lines, and then we have our data input. Um, and you would, you would think normally this would come in from the bus, but for now I'm not going to hook it directly to come in from the bus because when we're programming the computer, we actually don't want it to come from the bus. We want it to come from our dip switches that we're gonna to use to program the computer. So we'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, but for now, we've got, uh, we've got our, our memory, we've got the inverters that, that get the, 
output re-inverted so it matches what we've stored. Uh, we have our buffer that's going to buffer us out to the bus. Um, we've got our address lines and our data inputs. And if we want to test this a little bit, we can. We can uh, power it on. And it looks like we're getting all zeros. Either that or it's not working. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Let's try. Let's try changing the, our address. Okay, we're starting to get some things. Um, oh, and one thing I actually forgot to hook up is our write signal. If we want to write data into memory, we need a, a signal to do that, and that's just going to be uh, this write enable, uh, which is on pin three. And so, of course, if we're writing, we want to write to both chips at the same time. So I'm going to hook pin three on both of these chips together. And we've got our write signal here. And it is an active low, so if it's high, then we're not writing. And then if we bring this low, then that'll write whatever data is here into our chips. So let's power it up again and uh, see what's going on. So yeah, and you'll notice when we power it up, uh, you get kind of a random, random data. Okay, now it's consistent, but it's different than it was before. I don't know. But in any event, normally when you power it up, you're just going to get have some kind of garbage in the memory and, until, until we actually write it. So right now we've got a zero going in here. So if we change our write enable, it writes that zero now to that address. And of course that's address zero. If we go to address one, we see we have some other garbage in there, and we can write a zero to that. Okay, uh, or we could write something else. Remember, th these are our inputs. So we have, you know, zero, 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 but let's change this bit here to a one. So it's zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Now, if we write that, there we go. We get that written to address memory location one. Of course, we go back to address zero. We still have the zero that we put there. If we go back to address one, we get that data that we put there. Let's try going to address I don't know, this is three, right? Zero, zero, one, one in binary, that's three. Um, and let's, you know, we get some garbage in there or whatever. Let's just write some other little data pattern here. So let's just alternate bits. So this is zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And if we take our write enable low for a moment, it writes that data into address three. And of course, we go back to address one we get what we put there. If we go back to address zero, we should have a zero there. Uh, and it looks like we've got our memory working pretty well. Uh, I guess the only other piece we haven't tested is our 74LS245 to see if our buffer out to our bus is working. Um, I guess we could, you know, hook some, some LEDs up on the, on the output side of this here. So, you know, essentially just hook up a few LEDs over here. Maybe I won't even hook them all up. Just wanna just wanna see if it works. First off, let's go back to something that has some of those bits on. Oh, there we are. So we can see that those last three bits are out there, and then we should be able to disable that with our output enable. Yep. And that looks like it's working pretty well. Great, so in the next uh, videos, what we'll do is we'll hook up our address lines to our address register and our data lines uh, to our data input. Um, and both of these are going to be uh, either coming from address registers or the, or the data bus, or we're gonna have a switch that'll allow us to, um, to program the computer. You know, kind of like what I'm doing here where I'm setting these wires and, and toggling the, the right, but it'll be a little bit nicer. We'll use, we'll use some dip switches and stuff to allow us to program the computer.